So how do you close a sale when one of your competitors undercuts you? Let's say that you gave the prospect a proposal with different quotes in it, and they're also getting different quotes and bids from some of your competition. And they say something like this to you. They say, first of all, go down to the bottom of this video, hit the subscribe button. That's probably important for you. Hit the subscribe button, and to the right of that, or maybe the left, I don't know, somewhere in there, there's like a little bell. That's your notifications button. Hit the notifications button as well so you get notified by YouTube every time I post a new training video, which I typically do two to four times a week. They say, hey, um, you know, XYZ company gave us a quote that's cheaper than yours. Can you give us a better price? Now, instead of the just giving them a better price where they commoditize you now, and now they're gonna go back and forth and negotiate you down. You wanna get the prospect thinking, results-based thinking, rather than price or cost-based thinking. So here's how you do it. I'm gonna give you a generic example of how to start that conversation, and then at the end, I'm gonna show you how it works in like an industry-specific example so you can see the framework that we're using. Hey, can you give me, can you give me a, a cheaper price? Like the company XYZ gave us a lower bid or a lower cost or a lower proposal. First of all, you wanna find out what that quote actually is and what it's actually for. So you do it like this. Yeah, not a problem. Um, can I ask what quote they gave you and for what specifically? Now, why do you wanna ask that question? Because you have to realize a lot of your prospects just lie to you. They might not have even met with one of your competitors. They might be just saying that to try to get you to come down on your price. So you have to understand that. If they can't show you the quote or the proposal, then you know that that's probably what they're doing. Now, so let me go through this again. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, can I ask what quote they gave you and for what specifically, just so I have a better understanding? Well, yeah, they said it's gonna be this for A, B, C, or for D, F, and G. Ah, okay. Um, can you go through the proposal with me specifically just so I understand? Because you know maybe you're better off going with them. That disarms a prospect where they're open to going through what that company proposed to them so you know exactly what you're dealing with. That way you're not guessing, throwing mud against the wall, hoping and praying that something you're gonna say is gonna stick with them and they're gonna buy, okay? Now, here's where we start to get them thinking results-based thinking. I'm gonna move this up here for you, okay? Yeah, they gave us you know XYZ cost for A, B, and C, and you find out specifically what the cost is and what it was for. Then you say this, well, it really just depends on what type of result that you actually want. I mean, is, is price the most important thing to you or solving the problem and actually getting the result you want? Now, what did I just do there? When I said, now, is price the most important thing to you or actually solving the problem and getting the result you want? Is price the most important thing to you? Look at my hands. Is price the most important thing to you or actually solving the problem and getting the result you want? See how I'm using my hands? Price-based thinking, results-based thinking. That question flips their mind where they start thinking about the result, the end result, not the price. You don't want your prospect thinking of the price because then you're gonna get commoditized with everybody else and compete on price. You wanna be able to get them thinking results-based thinking because every salesperson in your industry doesn't know how to do that like I'm showing you how to do it, all right? Now, they're gonna say, well, yeah, I want the result, but if we can, they might say, yeah, I mean, definitely the result's more important, or they're gonna say, well, I mean, we definitely want the result, but you know, price is important too, or they might say, we definitely want the result, but you know, if we can get a better price, that would be good. Then you can say, if they say that, you're gonna go here. I'm gonna show you this. Can I, uh, yeah, that's not a problem. Can I make a suggestion to you? After you, this is after you've seen the quote and the proposal, you know what it is. What they quoted you is for X, Y, and Z, which actually only does A, B, and C. Now I'm being generic for a reason. You have to plug in that gap. Now we could give you that exact same quote for that, but like I said, it just depends on the end result that you want. So let me go over that again. What they quoted you is for X, Y, Z, which only does a, B, and C. So now you're getting them to think like, oh, maybe the company that gave me a cheaper quote is not gonna give me the result that I really want. See, that seeds doubt in their mind. Then you agree. Now, hey, we could give you the exact same quote for that too, but like I said, it just depends on the type of result that you want. Now, what does that get them thinking again? Results-based thinking rather than price-based thinking. Now, 
I'm going to give you an industry specific example just so you can see what happens at this point. Let's say that you sold home improvement, okay? And let's say that you sold windows. Okay, like I said, we train every industry on planet Earth. I'm just going to show you one example because we don't have much time in this reel or post that you're watching me, all right? We could, uh, I mean, we could install these cheaper XYZ windows that they quoted you. You know, you would just end up having to replace them in, you know, maybe five, seven years once they start wearing down and your, you know, your utility bills will stay the same. So we could give you the same quote, you know, for the cheap, cheapest windows if you want. Now, we could also put in, here's where you're going to give them an alternative. We could also put in like the mid-range window that would last a bit longer, you know, maybe 10, 12 years, and it would cut your utility by whatever percentage, 10%. I'm just going to throw something, I don't know, okay? It depends on the state you live in for that industry. Now, so you're giving them options. Now, we could also put in the mid-range window that would give you a, it'd last a bit longer, maybe 10 to 12 years, and cut your utility bound by XYZ percentages. Or, here's where you get them back to the original proposal you had. Or, we could completely solve the problems you mentioned and put in the ABC windows. Now, you want to mention those problems. Okay, let's say for windows, they had a problem with cold air coming in their infant's room at night and the infant would wake up and then mom and dad have to wake up and they're droggy at work and they hate their lives because they're always having to get up because it's so cold in their infant's room. That could be their problem. Plus their utility bills are high because of that and they're overpaying. So maybe that's their problem that you bring out of them. I mean, we could completely solve the problem where there was no cold draft coming into your daughter's room. You know, we could do that and we could put in the ABC windows that you said you originally wanted those are going to last the 20 to 25 years, and that would cut your utility bill down by, I'm just making up a number, 30%. So the question is, so you give them the three options, results-based thinking. So the question is, really, if you thought about it, which is really more expensive? Is it more expensive to get the extra funds to put in for the windows that last the longest, you know, increase the value of your home, and cut your utility down, bill down by XYZ percentages, or is it more expensive, let me go this here, or is it more expensive to put in the cheap windows that don't really last that long, the cold air still comes into your daughter's room at night, and you end up having to replace the windows again in five years anyways? Like if you thought about it, which is really more expensive? Okay, what did we just do there? We got the prospect again at the end to think more results-based thinking over price or cost-based thinking. Does that make sense? I want you to do that next time. Now, I just gave you a formula in the beginning of that for, let me go back here. Da, 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 da. This crazy whiteboard here. So I just gave you the formula that you can use for any industry here in the beginning. And then at the end, I showed you an industry-specific example. So you want to watch this a couple of times and write that down, write that formula for your specific product or industry that you actually sell in. I want you to do that next time a competitor comes in and undercuts you and the prospect says, hey, you know, we got a, a proposal or a bid from XYZ company that's cheaper than yours. Can you give us a better deal? Can you give us a better price? Rather than you just dropping down where your company loses tons of money, you lose a ton of commissions. If you take them through that formula and get them to think results-based thinking over price-based thinking, they will always pay you more than your competitors because they're more, you've got them to more focus on the end result than the price or the cost because they start to view at the end that it's actually more expensive by going with the cheaper option from another competitor than it is to go with a higher based option that completely solves their problems and gets them the result they want and they'll gladly pay you more for that. Try that next time and see how that works for you. Now, if you're wanting to learn how to sell more of your products and services than you are now, join our free Facebook group. Go to www.salesrevolution.pro. We should have a link on here somewhere, salesrevolution.pro. Right when you join the salesrevolution.pro Facebook group, because we've got thousands of entrepreneurs in there, thousands of salespeople like you, thousands of coaches, consultants, executives in there that want to sell more. 
right when you join, check your DMs because we're going to message you. Some of my team is going to message you a free training called the NEPQ 101 mini course. It's going to give you a list of different questions and phrases you can use in any sales situation. That alone is going to help you sell more than what you're doing now. And we go live in the Facebook group about three to four times a week with different subject matter trainings, different Q&As, different client interviews that will also help you sell more. Join the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. See you there.